Welcome again. In our last lesson, we examined the role of the anterior pituitary gland in regulating the events of the menstrual cycle. If you haven't completed that lesson yet, I would like you to click here to complete that lesson first before proceeding into today's activities. In males, the anterior pituitary gland produces the same hormones that are produced in females. At puberty, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are produced and they travel via the bloodstream to the testes. Here, FSH stimulates spermatogenesis, the development of sperm cells or spermatozoa, and luteinizing hormone, LH, stimulates testosterone production by the testes. In addition to having an effect on sperm production, testosterone triggers the development of secondary sexual characteristics like beard growth, pubic hair, deepening of the voice, and broadening of the shoulders. The events of sperm development begin inside the testes and under the influence of follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, cells in the epithelial lining of the seminiferous tubules divide by mitosis and mature into primary spermatocytes before undergoing a halving of their chromosome number by the reduction division of meiosis. Here in this light microscope image, you can see mature and developing sperm cells. Less distinct are the Sertoli cells, which provide nutrients for the developing spermatozoa. And here in the region between the tubules are the Leydig cells, which produce testosterone. Meiosis. Haploid spermatids grow into mature sperm cells. The sole function of sperm production is to provide one of the sex cells or gametes for sexual reproduction. The rate of sperm production is kept in check by a negative feedback loop. When testosterone levels become high, this stimulates the anterior pituitary to stop producing FSH and LH. And this slows sperm production, but also lowers testosterone. Low testosterone levels mean that the anterior pituitary would now once again produce FSH and LH. And it is through this negative feedback loop that homeostasis is maintained and testosterone levels and sperm production remain relatively constant. The mature spermatozoan is well equipped to go in search of the female gamete for its sole purpose is fertilization. Here you can see the acrosomal cap equipped with enzymes to break through the outer membrane of the ovum. The strong tail with its characteristic 9 plus 2 arrangement of microfibrils and the middle piece which contains a high concentration of mitochondria to provide the energy required for the long journey through the female reproductive system. In the female reproductive system similar events occur but instead of producing millions of gametes an adult female will produce approximately 400 viable gametes or ova in her lifetime and these Primordial follicles are present at birth and at puberty only one viable egg is released per month. Here meiosis is once again involved to produce gametes with the haploid number of chromosomes or half the number of a regular diploid cell. But only one of the four haploid cells is a viable gamete or an ovum. The remainder have less cytoplasm and will degenerate. By the time the egg is shed in ovulation, meiosis too is in progress, but it remains suspended at metaphase and will only complete the remaining divisions if fertilization occurs. Now we're ready to look at how it all comes together. Fertilization, the miracle of life. And for an excellent animation of this process, I would like to hand you over to the good people at Nucleus Medical Media. And to view this animation, you can click right here.